The official inflation figures out this morning uh, back up to 10.4 percent, uh, despite wider predictions that it could fall back to single figures. Just reminding 10.1 percent to the previous month. Well, the chances recent pledges to halve inflation uh, this year uh, may be now uh, more difficult to achieve. The Office for National Statistics putting the latest increase down to higher prices in food, uh, restaurant, hospitality industry and clothing, too. And of course, we've got the Bank of England uh, with the interest rate decision tomorrow, the base rate, under pressure uh, perhaps now to push them uh, higher again, even though that could cause problems for the banks and increasing the financial burdens on already squeezed households. Well, joining us now, Business and Economics Editor Liam Halligan with On The Money. Uh, and Wait for it, uh, and we get there. Um, good things come that good those, things, to those who yeah, wait. Including even higher inflation. Unfortunately, this is, a, this is a surprise. I think it was widely predicted that inflation would fall into single digits this month, but that hasn't happened. Let's take a quick look at the numbers, Mark. We can see that in January, inflation was down to 10.1 percent. That was that much lower than 11.1 percent in the late autumn. Uh, at, but then it went up again in February. That's the numbers that came out this morning to 10.4 percent which is a big disappointment. And as you say, a lot of that was driven by food, Mark. Food price inflation was up 18.2% in February 2023. So mm. a standard basket of food was 18.2% more expensive in February this year than February last year. And that's the sharpest increase in food prices since 1977. But even that, that, those eye-watering numbers, a lot of people that go to the supermarket will say, Actually, I think food prices have gone up even more. You know, milk's like 30, 35% more expensive. Your skim milk, 42.2%. Bread, bread, yeah. bread as well, because yeah. of grain prices and so on. And a lot of the reason we've got this rise in food prices is linked to, I'm afraid, the war in Ukraine, the impact on fertilizer prices, the yeah. price of crops that come out of Russia and Ukraine getting them out through the black sea. But we, we do also remember uh, the hunt for a tomato uh, or other bits of veg, yeah. of course, with the empty shelves. That pushed prices. I That's, mean, did, did it have a direct effect on it this? It did have a direct effect. I'd say uh, uh, at least part of this sharp spike mm. in food prices. The highest since 19, the 1977, the Queen's Silver Jubilee, the late Queen's yeah. Silver Jubilee, when we were lads. At least part of the reason is because of high energy costs. You've had... Uh, companies that grow fruit and veg in greenhouses, their heating costs have been a lot more expensive, mm. their transport costs have been more expensive. But it's also domestic food too, as any farmer will tell you. Yeah. Fertiliser prices remain really, really high. Fuel prices still remain a lot higher than before the war in Iraq. And all of this feeds yeah. into food prices. And also something else, Mark, you know, since lockdown ended, we're trying to get to some kind of pre-lockdown normality. Mm. There is a sense that the economy is improving. In inflation, we thought, was coming down, but we've dodged recession. More people are going out to eat. More people are spending uh, money on weekend breaks and so on. But the cost of all that has yeah. gone up a lot, Which, not least because a lot of the restaurants and hotels have got huge debts that, that they they're incurred trying to cover. Yeah. as they got yeah. through COVID. Well, Jeremy Hunt, the Chancellor, very helpfully said, falling inflation isn't inevitable, <laughs> which uh, isn't that encouraging. Uh, of course, the government's saying we will halve inflation by the end of the year. Now, he also told the House of Lords Economics Committee that the priority of the Bank of England is to halve inflation. They're meeting tomorrow to decide on, on what happens with the base rate. Mm. And we were talking earlier uh, this week because of what's happened with the banks that the you know, they may be under pressure to keep a hold because of what it's done to, to bank shares and so on. That's right. Just before I get into the Bank of England, I think it's worth saying that inflation is likely to fall quite sharply next month, if you think about it, because it was in late February 2022 when Putin invaded Ukraine. Mm. It was in March that you had the real upward spike in fuel prices and food prices, the, the initial shock yeah, yeah. of that war. So in March, a year on, March 2023, i.e. the numbers for next month when they come out, they're likely to be lower than that immediate post-war spike. Yeah. So I do think inflation will come down. I do think this is a bit of a blip and a general mm. downward trend in inflation. But as you say, the Bank of England now firmly across the horns mm. of a dilemma, if you like. On the one hand, they want to be seen to be serious about bearing down on inflation, which would mean another sharp interest rate hike. 
On the other hand, it's not really high demand and spending that's causing this inflation. It's costs mm. and the interest, supply side yeah, of the call. Interest it, yeah. cost push inflation, as we call it, as we call it. Interest rate mm. rises aren't going to affect that. And also, Mark, it strikes me that you have. Uh, Around the world, the US Federal Reserve, the Bank of England, even the Bank of China, they are now worried about the international banking system yeah. and the stability of that. So that may be a reason for the Bank of England and the Federal Reserve later today I was, I was going to, say that to the, keep rates on hold. Yeah, so keep will, will the hold. Bank of England be looking at what happens oh, in absolutely. the States tonight? So, look, yeah. look, the, the Federal Reserve is by far and away yeah. the most important central bank in the world. The dollar, the price of the dollar, which they effectively set by setting interest rates, is by far and away the most important economic variable yep. in the world. And so the Bank of England, I would be amazed if it didn't do pretty much what the Fed does later yep. today. Thank you, as ever. And, and of course, 12 o'clock tomorrow yeah, will be the Bank we'll of England be there. decision. Yeah, you'll hear it here first. Well, we'll try to get it first. Uh, and you'll be at the Bank of England. I'll be at the so Bank of England. Excellent.